Salvati omnes. This video is an introduction to our Latin 3 course. In previous Latin courses, you have worked with textbook and grammatical materials to learn the rudiments of the Latin language. We will still be learning new grammar this year, but this will be the first of our topic courses with a focus on Roman women. Topic courses are designed to take your understanding of the ancient world to the next level, not only in terms of what you can do with the language, but also in thinking about the ways in which the ancient world has been used in our modern world and has impacted the way we think about things. Topic courses are intended to take your understanding of the ancient world to the next level, not only in terms of what you can do with the language, but also in the ways in which we think about the ancient world and its impact on our world today. Traditional Eurocentric education draws heavily upon the ancient world, as does our so-called Western culture, but it does so to reinforce a white supremacist, cisgendered male, able-bodied view of the world. By engaging with this reality and thinking about the ways in which the ancient world has influenced our modern structures and preconceptions, we can begin to envisage and work toward a world that is shaped by gender and racial equity. To do this effectively, we will be engaging with the city of Philadelphia and exploring issues of intersectional gender within our own city, with a final project focusing on service learning and contributing to a world shaped by freedom and not oppression. This video will introduce you to our Latin 3 course, Roman Women, and what you can expect from the coming year. So why Roman women? The ancient Mediterranean is, by the nature of much of the source material, taught through the narratives of men. Ancient Roman society, like our world today, was guided by patriarchal policies, and women's roles were largely restricted to the domestic realm. This general view, however, ellipses female lived experience and reduces women to 2D characters in an otherwise male history. In addition, Gender is a social construct, not a fixed reality, and we will think about the ways gender has been used to create and perpetuate structures of control and oppression. The role of this course, therefore, is to attempt, where possible, to flesh out excluded and lost voices, roles and personalities, and to engage with issues of power and gender in the ancient world and today. What evidence do we have for Roman women? Actually quite a lot, but much of it is problematic. We do have some writing by ancient female authors, beyond just the famous works of Sappho and Sulpicia, but unfortunately these works are largely understudied and the generic tropes of the work make interpretation difficult. Women appear in the literary record as either examples for other women to follow or cautionary tales of women moving beyond their expected social roles. They are subject to male control, or they are victims of their own poor behaviour. Outside of the literary record, women appear in inscriptions, particularly funerary inscriptions, written by male relatives which praise them in formulaic ways. They appear in art and wall paintings, and in graffiti. It is in the surviving papyrus fragments from predominantly Egypt and northern England that we get access to actual female voices and their daily experiences as they write to relatives and friends. We will explore all of these avenues of inquiry during the course of this year. So what limitations do we need to be aware of when looking at primary sources and the reception of those sources by scholars? First, only about 5% of the ancient Mediterranean material survives, which makes it hard to accurately reconstruct ancient societies. The history of Rome also covers over a thousand years, and so attitudes to gender clearly change significantly over that period. Also, given the nature of Roman imperialism overwriting much of existing culture within conquered territories, we lose the rich diversity of gender experience that was surely a part of the empire for so many. This is especially true because the majority of our evidence reflects elite life in the ancient world, while the life of an everyday citizen, foreigner, person in poverty, or enslaved individual has been lost. 
The elite focus of our evidence skews our understanding, since experiences were clearly very different depending on class, geography, and status. As already mentioned, much of our evidence also comes from men, and therefore the portrayal of women in literature and art reflects male concerns rather than female realities. Think about media portrayal of women today, and how female characters are often totally detached from female lived experience, more reflective of male attitudes and desires, and rarely reflective of the actual diversity of populations consuming those products. And speaking of diversity, given the history of the classical tradition, crafted by and representing white European male traditions, the majority of the work done over the past few hundred years has ignored the rich tapestry of cultures the empire comprised and has whitewashed the true history of this far-reaching network of culture and trade. And this has of course had serious implications for our understanding of many areas of study, including gender in the ancient world. We will have to keep all of this in mind as we think about the various sources we encounter this year. So what are some of the highlights of the course? We will begin the year by discussing gender as a social construct and looking at some examples of male descriptions of the ideal woman and what was expected of women. This will be compared with issues of gender in the modern world. Women play important roles in foundation stories, and we will look closely at a number of examples. Starting with Pandora, we will discuss issues of male insecurity about women and female sexuality. We will also look closely at the role women played at various foundational moments in Roman history, from the character of Lavinia and the Aeneid, to the rape of the Sabine women, to the story of the rape of Lucretia. As the titles suggest, this will ask us to confront issues of abduction and sexual violence aimed at women, and how this played into social rituals such as the wedding ceremony. After this unit, we will think about modern male control of female bodies both in our own culture and that of others. We will look at powerful women in the ancient world and how they were portrayed by men afraid of women gaining too much power. From mythical figures to Hellenistic queens to members of the Roman imperial family, these women represented transgressions of behavioral norms and were viewed as threats to social stability. We will go on to consider how powerful women are described today particularly in the political realm. We will also consider transgender issues in the ancient world through the figure of Attis, eunuch priest of the mother goddess Kibele, as presented in Catullus 63. Through the use of gendered endings on Latin words, Catullus explores issues of what it means to be male or female or neither, and how non-binary individuals represented something beyond the acceptable prescribed boundaries of so-called respectable society. In addition to looking at these issues today, again particularly through the lens of political policies, we will also think about the importance of English translation of a language that allows much more nuance of gender representations such as Latin. This course will require some translation of unabridged Latin texts, some readings of texts in translation, written reflections, and projects. You will also be asked to put your learning to use in making a difference beyond the confines of the classroom. As we meet with a number of experts from around the city, you will be asked to partner with one of those organizations to do some service work. You can do this at any time during the school year. Whenever a topic speaks to you, you can dive deeper into that topic. This will culminate in a final end of year poster project where you present the work that you have done with that organization and discuss the similarities and differences in the issue between the ancient world and today. As the year progresses, you can reach out to me via email whenever you have a question or set up a time to meet with me in person. Bring your full self to class and challenge yourself to push harder as we dive into serious topics around gender and power throughout the year. Think about the identities you bring to class and how those various lenses affect the way you respond to the sources we examine. Your varying voices and perspectives are important. Wale te omnes.